Hi guys, uh, just let me know you can hear me. Uh, I don't know whether I'm gonna be able to get the questions though, um, but I just thought I'd take you through everything I've got. Now, I'm not sure how the audio is gonna actually sound. Um, so what I've got here, I'll show you a couple of things. I don't think I'm gonna be taking this tomorrow. That, that That's my other pro photo set, which is the B1s. Uh, I've got them there, but basically, um, if I take you through here, you'll see what I've got. Now, I've got two bags that I'm probably going to take. These are, are think tanks. If you look down here, um, you'll see that it's the think tank bags that I'm actually using. So uh, this is one bag I've got. Hi, Reza, how are you? So this is the one bag, and then I'm going to show you the other one, but I'll show you what I've got inside um, both of these. Um, this is the second bag that I'm taking. So this bag is going to be more for the video side of things. Uh, and the other bag is going to be more for the still side. Now, remember, tomorrow I'm going to be doing fusion. Um, so what I've got is this. I'll just show you first. So I've got, I'm going to take one light modifier, which I'm going to take just this two-foot octa. Um, so you can sort of see under here why they call it an octa. So this will be the octa that I'm actually going to take. Um, I like that one because it's, it's really quite nice and small. Um, but it gives me great... Uh, beautiful soft lighting. So that's what I'll be using tomorrow for the light modifier. The tripod at the back there is my Miller tripod. Um, I've also got a slider on there, which I've just got to get out of the other room. I think Ben, oh no, Ben's got it. He's got to bring it back to me. Uh, so I will have a slider on that as well that I'll be using tomorrow um, as well. That That's a great tripod and it does go up really high. The Miller tripods are fantastic. So I'll probably take that. This is going to be... Um, just a small um, single uh, monopod that I use that I'm going to use for my light. So this will have the Profoto B10 connected to it. It is a lot of gear, mirrorless. <laughs> but I'm doing fusion tomorrow, so I'm doing video and stills at the same time. So this is why this is a lot. So the light will get connected to there, and then obviously I can, I can open up the legs and stand it down, and then it, the light will actually attach into the modifier through here. So let's look at the camera bag anyway. So if you look at this, so what I'm going to take, remember I always like redundancy, so even though I'm going to be using the B10 as my main light, and I'll probably use this all day tomorrow for continuous and for still light, um, I'm still going to take two other flashes. So I'm taking my Sony flashes, so I've got two of these. I may do some off-camera flash with these, or I might even use them on camera, but I find sometimes, I, like I said, I always like redundancy, so I always like to be able to um, have other things in case if something fails. I mean, I've never had a pro photo fail, but if it did, then at least I can still shoot off-camera flash uh, with this as well. Now, the gimbal I'm going to be using is obviously this one, which is the Moser Air 2 that's just been, well, it's not released yet. It's going to be released next month, I believe, early in the middle of next month. So I'm going to be using that. And the camera that I'm going to be using on that is going to be the A9. Uh, and I've got the Tamron 28-75 to on that uh, as well. Guys, sorry I'm not saying hello because I, I... Can I go across like that to see your... Yeah, I can't get the questions to show up. Uh, I'm just trying to see if I can get them down. No. Whoop. Yeah, I don't know how to get it. I think it just dropped out for a second there. Um, so that's the, that's the camera that I'm actually going to be using. So uh, I'll be having that. Now, remember, when I'm doing the Fusion, I will be holding that sometimes and also my other camera. So the other camera I'm going to use is going to be this one, which is the a7 III. So I'll be using the a7 III. And I've got on there at the moment the Sony 35 1.4. So this, this will be one of the main lenses I'll use for tomorrow. Um, I'll be using this. So that's one of the main lenses I'll be using, but the other lenses that I'm taking on the day are these lenses. So I've got in here, which is the 16 to 35. So I'm taking that for the wide angle. And <laughs> they do look a bit used because that's just the way I treat them. Um, so that's 16 to 35. Uh, I'll be taking the Battis 85. So the main lenses I'll be using tomorrow are going to be the uh, 35 1.4, this is for stills, and the 85 Battis. They'll be the main two that I'll use tomorrow. I also have the um, the Sony 70 to 200 f4. So I'll be using this too if I need some things to uh, 
have compression and stuff like that, or I'm shooting from a fair way away, I'll use the 70 to 200. Um, so they're the main things. Now, the other thing I'll have too is this. I'm taking this in case if there's really low. No, I don't use lens cap gourd. Uh, sorry if guys are asking me questions because I only see them for a second. Um, if I miss them, I won't be able to answer. But yeah, I've, I'm using this uh, if there's low light. Uh, yes, they are, has. I never put lens caps on. I want to be able to grab things quickly and then just uh, throw them back in the bag. Uh, the thing is, the lens is a, a lot tougher than what you give them credit for. Um, so I don't, I never put lens caps on and I don't even put UV filters on either. Uh, I haven't used lens caps for years. And the lenses are still really good condition. It's only the outside that looks a bit rough. Uh, because I am a bit rough with them. 55 will be used if there's low light, and I may also use that for some video as well if I want to get some beautiful separation and, and put that on the A9 and um, use that for uh, some separation. Uh, this is the battery power pack for um, the um, Pro Photo. I'm also going to take as well, because I might do some, which is, have I got it in there? Yeah, I may use this to do some time lapse. So I've got the Velo uh, time lapse that I can use. I'm, so I might do a fraction of that due to the fact that this is fusion. So I might do that too, uh, and you know as well. Inside here, I've just obviously got spare batteries, and I'm, I'm still got to put my spare batteries in. I'm still charging everything. I've got two photo uh, Pro Photo Air remotes. Now remember, like everything I said to you, I like redundancy for everything. So I've got two Pro Photo Air remotes. Um, on this part here, I've got the mag reflector. Now this reflector, just bear with me while I open this up. This reflector has some voodoo science to it because this changes the pro photo, which is a 250 watt strobe into a thousand watt strobe roughly. Um, it gives two stops of extra light. It's incredible. I've measured it with my um, light meter. Um, and it does add two stops of extra light. So if I need to overpower the sun, I can do that with a 250 watt um, little B10 there because the power that that puts out is incredible when I put that light modifier on. Um, so I'll be using that. I've got my gray card down here ready to go. So this one is the color checker passport, obviously. So I can use the gray card uh, there to check for white balance. I said that's very important. Um, so I've got that ready to go as well. Um, light meter if I do need it, so I can take that. Uh, that's all from this side of things. Now, if we go over to here, um, I'll show you what's in the video side. Now, I've got my ice lights ready to go. So I've got three ice lights that I'm running here. Um, the, yeah, the reflector is awesome, Wayne. It, it's, it's unbelievable how good that reflector is. It, it, the light intensity that they add is incredible. These are batteries, spare batteries for the ice lights. I've got the older version, I've got the version one. The version two has batteries that you take off from the handle. Um, I've got the version ones. They have the barn doors already built on them. Uh, so, you know, I can take the barn doors off if I want to, uh, but I love, love using the ice lights. Now, let's have a look at the video bag. So what I've got here is I've got two, um, Neo Roto lights. Uh, so these will be used. Oh, I'll turn it off so it's not too glary. Uh, these will be used for the uh, reception, and I'm going to be using these. It keeps turning itself on from the back. Um, I'm going to be using these um, to light up the speeches. So I'll probably and um, I may use them to other areas if, if I want to add a little bit of light into sections. But so these are going to be used for that. I'll be using the ice lights. Uh, to light up the bride and do the formal shots uh, because I love how um, beautiful and soft the ice lights give me. The Neo Rotor lights aren't as soft as what the ice light is, so I'll be using ice lights whenever I'm dealing with shooting the bride and things like that uh, or photographing the bride for formal. So I've got two of these that I'll put on light stands um, and basically... Uh, so I've got two of those that I can use. Um, this little device here, I use this to connect onto my camera. Now I've got the Sony a7R 2 in there and I've got the 18 to 105. This is the lens that I'm gonna use in the ceremony and the camera I'm gonna use in the ceremony tomorrow 
Uh, I, I've got no idea how much gear is here. <laughs> I've got no idea. It's a lot. It's pretty, it's pretty expensive. Um, this uh, little thing that I've got here lets me put in two of these, which I'll show you. Um, I've got two of these setups, which I'm using the road video um, links. Um, they'll go on either side. So basically what I do, let me just see if I can, I'll get the stand. Let me just get the stand. Uh, this will also be going to, by the way, I'll be taking this to attach into the um, switch, uh, into the board for the speeches and things like that. So I, I actually uh, wire that directly into the uh, PA or whatever is um, being used. So let me just put this on the stand and I'll show you what I do. All right. So what we do with this, uh, where are we? So like I said, I've got two of these that I actually use. Um, and what you do is, I'll show you. So I grab the camera and then basically this will go on the top. I've just got to see if I can get this without losing it all. That sits on the top of the camera like that. Now this lead then goes into your mic input at the back. So if I open this up, hopefully you can see it. If I open that, it will go in here. Now you can monitor your audio out, obviously through the camera, but then what I do is I have two of these. So this screws into the side here, and then basically it connects through the front. Now the beauty of this is I can have two mics. So I can mic up the groom and I can mic up the, the priest with two of these and it then puts it into the left and the right channel of the camera so that I can separate it later on. Uh, and I, I really like working that way. So the, the idea is that um, you have this uh, obviously connected to the, the groom or the priest, and then you have the other side connected there. The second one will go on that side, and then you attach this just to the right and the left channel there. So you can record directly, have two people recording directly onto the camera. Excuse me. Um, I do like going that way because then I don't have to sync it up later in post. Now, I will have extra recordings going because I'm not silly enough in case if there's an issue there, I'll have another camera, which the A6500 is still in the studio. Um, I will also be using these, which are the, the Zoom H1s or F1, I should say. I've got two of these. There's another one that's actually in there, down the bottom in there. Um, I'll be miking these up into separate, or putting these in separate places as well. So I'll have um, redundancy again uh, going on. On the camera itself, I'll just be using just this little, um, I think it's a micro, Rode micro. Um, I'll have that on top of one of the cameras. So I'll have that to have uh, on camera, uh, sound and I'll even put this which is just a zoom uh, this is the H1 I'll have this just sitting near the priest or somewhere like that or near a speaker dangling down or whatever so I'll have redundancy showing that way as well so I have multiple redundancy of audio and this is why I'm saying to you uh, I mentioned just before about having a camera with dual card slots uh, why I love that because it gives you that redundancy and all the time I've got redundancy here uh, as well. Um, another lens that I've got in here is the macro. So this is what I use uh, for the macro. This is just the 30 mil 3.5. I think it's the 30 mil. Uh, I always forget the size that this is. What is it? Yeah, it's the 33.5 macro. And the other lenses I'm just taking, just in case if I need them, is the 30, <laughs> it's a bit scratched, uh, the 35 2.8. It shows you how tough these lenses are though, like they're still optically brilliant. They're just a bit rough on the outside. And I'm taking the 10 to 18 as well if I need a wide angle uh, lens as well uh, in there. So I've got that too. The drone I'm gonna be using is the Phantom 4 um, that I'll be using for that as well. And I've obviously got the, I've got a couple of spare batteries and I've also got the, um, what are these ones? I can't remember, Polar Pro I think, are they? 
yeah, Polar Pro NDs that I'll use with the, the actual drone. Um, so it shows, I mean, I've got, an, like I said, I've got an awful lot of gear, but I've got two people helping me tomorrow. But because I'm doing video, you can see how much the audio takes. These are just leads and things like that that I can patch into, um, into the decks so that I can record the sound directly. I've got headphones that I need to monitor the sound as well. David, how much time do you allow yourself to set up all the audio? Um, I want at least 45 minutes at the church before the ceremony begins. Uh, I need that time because I've got to mic people up. I have to set all of these external bits of audio, the backup audio and stuff like that. So I like to be around 45 minutes before the bride comes. Uh, and that gives me enough time to mic up the priest. Uh, it gives me enough time to mic up the groom. Um, and like I said, put the uh, redundancy sort of audio gear everywhere else. And it's the same getting to the reception. I like to be at the reception, you know, a good half an hour or so to set everything up before, um, before they come and get introduced. Uh, so, you know, that's basically what I'll be taking. It'll look neater when I go. Um, batteries, obviously I'm taking spare batteries in case if I need all the spare batteries. Uh, I love this little device because it's an Elder Chrome, but you connect your camera right to the top and that can connect to on top of a uh, tripod or something like that as well. I've also got this great little device. Where did I put it? I think, uh, oh, it's here. Also, this little Elder Chrome device is amazing. Um, I'll show you how this works because this is, I love this little thing. Um, what it does, just have to make sure you can see me. What it does is you fold these down, which are the wheels. This folds out, that folds out. That comes the opposite way, I think, like that and out. Now, then what it does is, if I scroll this down, So what you do then is you just attach your camera to the top here and it just screws in and then you can use this like a, a roller and you can do just interesting things because if you move these you can then roll around things and so I use this for video and you get beautiful smooth, um, I often do it for instance if I've got the flowers and stuff like that you know, I'll do a smooth sort of move around the flowers. The flowers will be here and it will sort of smoothly pan around like that. Um, great if you just want to not take a slider, uh, stuff like that. Um, what else? So that's a little Elder Crone slider thing. Uh, I'll just show you the rest of my studio while we're here anyway. So this is the makeup little station that I've got over here just so you can see it. Um, so the girls, you can see my beautiful t-shirt. Girls are always doing their hair and makeup over this section over here. I've got all stuff built into this section, you know, that they'll have everything that they need. Um, bike I use as a, as a um, just as a prop. So it's not used as an actual bike, it's just a prop. This area is just so that the people uh, can sit down uh, and watch. So I've just got basically that there. I've got big curtains here because I use natural daylight coming in in a lot of the shoots. Um, so I really like that natural daylight. And I've got big V-flats that I can use through here as well. Uh, and I can take them over there and use them near the light, which is just beautiful. Um, but yeah, that's a beautiful couch. It's really, really comfortable. Uh, all the windows are electronic, so you can just open them up and it can be blanked out. So they're all done. I have a full-size mirror that you can see through here, so girls can be checking themselves out or whatever. Uh, check that their outfits are, are, are really nice. I've got a stool there that I use all the time for girls to lean on and pose on, so I do that all the time. Uh, I really love that section. Um, if you're looking down towards the other side, you can see here that I've got my, obviously, the five foot octa that I'm running through that section there. Um, obviously, and it's on a big um, C stand that's on wheels, so I can move that around, uh, which I really like. That little tray there, I just like because I can put cameras and stuff like that and then wheel this around to where I need it. So I really like how that actually works. When I built this, um, 
I built it with this big arch, arch sort of up in the ceiling, so it's seamless. There's no architraves or anything like that in here. Um, it's all seamless, so I've got very, a really high roof in here that uh, I can do everything like that. It cost me a fair bit of money, but I really like it, so I've got that extra height that I need. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to use this um, five foot octa up high enough or, or whatever to you know get a decent um, down with light from above. It's all air conditioned, obviously. These lights all along the top are all wireless, so I can change these to any color that I like. Uh, and you know I can just control those from my phone, um, and obviously the the down lights as well, uh, you know, can be controlled as well. So I can lighten them up or or take them down. So this room's quite big. It's certainly big enough for me uh, to actually uh, do anything that I need to do. I've just got down the back um, just two paper rolls. I've just got the white and I've got the um, grey paper that I tend to use. Um, you know, and then obviously I've got a little flower bed that Kerry made here that I use all the time. Uh, that's really beautiful. I've got the V flats that I use. I've got a um, big, this thing here is just Perspex that I use sometimes if I want the floor to be sort of glossy or like a mirror. Um, so I use that as well. Um, like I said, the windows are all electronic, so I can open them up and close them. The studio itself, uh, if you walk into here, you'll see where I do all my broadcasting from. Um, so you'll see my setup there. The, the desk itself is, is electronic, so I usually stand during the day. Um, and basically I can move it up and down and, and work out the size that I need, so I can do that. The TV at the back is there so that people, when they're coming in uh, to view their wedding videos, uh, sit down, or even clients that are viewing their images, they'll sit down on this couch here, um, and then they'll basically just look up onto the screen there uh, and they can see the image beautifully up there. It's bigger than it looks. It's actually a, a 70 inch TV, so it's, it's really quite big. You can see my lighting set up through there. Um, and this is the computer setup that I've actually uh, got. It's a bit of a mess at the moment, actually. Uh, I'm gonna take this, obviously, to record the sound. This is um, just for some audio when I want to dub through. Uh, you can see the tablet that I use through here. Uh, I've got the Mac Pro that I'm using uh, through there. Um, and I've also got um, a, another second monitor that I've got through there. So, uh, and the studio speakers that I'm running here as well, the Fostex ones that I'm running as studio speakers. I've got a fridge there, obviously, that I can give clients drinks. Uh, there's Susie <laughs> and a couple of gimbals that I'm using through there. So that is my studio side of it. Over here, uh, I've got all of my books and bits and pieces all in this uh, section over here. Business cards are all over there. Uh, the, I've got all the lighting that I can control wirelessly and change the colour uh, through there as well, as well as downlights, obviously. And this has the same high ceiling through here as well. Uh, I just love how it's got no architrave and it's all raised up in that pattern, which I really like. Um, the, uh, the back, I'm, I'm just sort of showing sort of walking out, it'll give you an idea, uh, you know, sort of how this all looks. You can see there the microphone I use, uh, which is a Sennheiser mic, uh, just attached to a Rode arm that I'm using there. Uh, so that's how I'm getting my audio in during the podcast to you guys. Um, and then I just have a storage room, which basically uh, is in here. So in the storage area, I've just got all of my uh, sheets and blankets and backdrops and stuff like that. Um, all through here. Light stands are usually here, but I've got a lot of light stands out because I'm taking a lot of them um, with me uh, as well. All this stuff through here is lighting. So I've got all my lighting stuff, all my gimbals and stuff like that are under here. So I've got a, quite a few gimbals under there that I don't, just don't use now. I should sell them probably. Um, I've got cases and stuff that I use for kids shoots and things like that through there. Again, these boxes and stuff like that are for vintage shoots that I do. Um, all my masking tape and stuff like that, gaffer's tapes in here, and I've got all the smoke stuff that I do when I'm doing smoke shoots and everything else are, are sort of all through here. Uh, Honda, down there is a generator because I do stuff with smoke and stuff like that, and I've got a smoke machine through there. All my battery charging is in this section through here. Um, these are some of my pro photo lights and stuff like that, modifiers that I run all through here as well. 
Uh, and down the back, I've got the bigger modifiers. So there's bigger modifiers through here. These are all my belts uh, that I use um, and things like that and holsters and stuff like that that I use. I have everything locked up though in cases. So anything that's expensive, I lock up in these cases that are here. Uh, so if someone did break in, they're not gonna get anything. Uh, you won't break into these at all. They're really strong, solid steel cases that are fire rated. So, you know, you won't get out. Walkie talkies for when we're doing weddings and stuff like that, I like to connect. Uh, if we're working far apart, I, I can use walkie talkies. Um, yeah, so it gives you an idea. I just have um, things like all my leads and ladders and stuff like that, and there's weights and everything else that I run through here. So this is just sort of like the storage area that I run from. All my bags and everything like that are up there. Uh, I've got extra bags in there because of those cases that you saw before that I'm running from down here, um, they're also in those uh, bags. I've got another two um a big cases that are in there as well. I use the think tank cases for everything. Um, yeah, so it gives you an idea anyway of what I run. I run these Profoto D1s in the studio. Uh, that's a wind machine that I actually use all the time. And then I've got C stands that I love if I want to have lights and stuff coming over people. You can see another D1 uh, that I'm running over there as well with a, a 12, uh, that's just the, I think it's the two, oh, two foot, beauty dish, I think, with a diffuser on it. Um, so anyway, that's uh, basically it. So if you have any questions, um, like I said, it's a bit messy at the moment because I've been getting everything out ready for this wedding, uh, and then I'll clean it up once I've got everything in the cases and then put everything away. Again, I just wanted to work out what I needed to take for tomorrow. So if you have any questions, uh, leave them down below, uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I uh, hope you enjoyed looking around my studio. Uh, everyone always asks me about that chair. I just love that chair. It really is uh, funky. Oh, now I'll show you what I've got underneath anyway. Um, the backup drives underneath there are um, Promise, uh, they're Pegasus drives. So that's basically what I'm using to back up. You can see I've got two of them with four drives in each. And I've also got a UPS through there as well. Uh, that I run. So that's how I'm backing up all my images um, in that regard. So yeah. All right, guys, that's about all. I uh, just wanted to show you all that anyway. So I hope you enjoyed looking at all my gear uh, and I'll catch you all again soon for another video. Uh, bye for now, guys. Leave any questions down below.